Welcome back everyone to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's video we shall try to optimize and change up a little bit our crafting function uh, because well we have now our slot limits and if we go uh, above that in our recipe that means well we are not going to be able to consume those items and also another issue would be if we would go let's say we go to our items database and let's say I have a vest and for the vest I want to use for battle axes I'm not really able to do so uh, because the items are not stackable and there is no way that the that four battle axes can be in the same slot but if we change some things up a little bit everything is going to be possible so without further ado let's go to our UI craftable where we have all the functionality uh, that is necessary for us to craft these items so as of right now this is what we got what I'm going to do is, just like in the previous videos, disconnect the function node itself and start all over again. So, the first thing what we want to do is obviously drag in our item data. We want to split that. Yeah, actually, I'm going to break it because we need the recipe from it. So, let's open this up. We have the recipe and here what we want to do is we want to do a loop with a break. So, let's do that move this in a little bit and then in the loop body uh, we want to drag in the reference from our player because in the loop body we want to return the stacks of those items so let's return stacks this is the function we created in the previous video for the item we need to use the ri element from our loop and then what we can do is simply check if the return amount is bigger or equal to the amount from this RI element. So let's break this and use this amount in the bottom row. So now this is going to check whether we have plenty of those items. And if that is true, let's drag from it, do a if branch check, connect the execution. And if that is true, we are not going to do anything. We're going to use the same pattern we used previously. We are only going to uh, enter a Boolean value if we fail to do, if we fail to find uh, the items, if we don't have enough of those. So let's select our local fail and let's set that to be true if this value is false. Then from this one, we can go to our break and be done with our loop if we fail to have the items that are necessary. So that's going to be it for the top part. As simple as that looks pretty similar to what we had previously, it's a few nodes less. Uh, now let's go to our loop again. And from the loop completion, we need to do a if branch check because we want to check whether we failed or not. So let's use our local fail as a condition. And obviously, if this is true, that means we failed. So we can just simply return. So let's add a return node. And well, if we compile it now, you can see this gives us a warning. So we need to make the event reply so that there is something put in in the input. So now if we compile, the warning is gone and everything is good. Now, if this value is false, if the branch returns as false, what we want to do is again drag in our player reference. And well, we have already checked. That means we have plenty of items. They're all accessible to us. So as our player, first, we want to try to add the item. Uh, because we want to check if we have plenty of space to actually hold this item. Now for the item itself, we will use our row name that we provided from the outside. So let's drag in our row name and we want to make this slot structure and we want to make the item structure item data table row and now let's connect the row name to the bottom. Let's manually select our database. So I have the items database. And for the type, we can leave that empty. But for the amount, we need to use the amount from the item data. So we have our outcraft amount, and that is going to be the amount that we are going to add to our inventory. Now, from our add items function, we need to do a if branch check to see if we were able to add this item to our equipment. If we were not able, if this is false, then we can directly return this and we can return the uh, event reply since that is needed just like at the top over here so this is going to finish our event successfully 
But if this is true, what we want to do is again loop through our recipe. Well, to make life a little bit easier, shorter routes, I'm going to drag in the item data, split this and do a loop again, another loop on the recipe, but this time without a break because we need to loop through the whole thing because we already checked that we have plenty of items, so it's all good. So we are running this loop and then inside of this loop let's drag in the player reference again and let's remove the item and since in the previous video we optimized this function this is going to work just fine all we got to do is just plug in the ri element into the item and it is going to find all the items and this is going to now consume items from our backpack and from our player slots and the items don't have to be stackable they can be in multiple stacks or whatever if we have those items in our equipment, it is going to remove those. And obviously, if you didn't watch the previous video, make sure you do, because that is where we optimize this function. And well, probably you already noticed then if you didn't watch the previous video that you don't have this function. So now the last thing that is left for us to do is, well, we have added an item. We have removed all the necessary items. And the last thing left for us to do is to refresh our widget. So let's drag in another reference to our character and let's run our refresh inventory widget function. Plug that in the execution into the loops completion. And for the position, let's simply type in the inventory. And at the end of it all, we can again return. So let's plug in our return node like so. And there we go. That's going to be all that is needed for our crafting to be fully functioning. Now, of course, I'm going to remove this from over here. There we go. Now to clean this up a little bit, just a tiny smidge, what you can do is go to your local variables and you can remove the local amount. So I'm going to delete that. And you can also delete the local index RI as well, because, well, we are no longer using that. Now, one small detail that I should probably mention is that in our add items function in the source, we, well, I left this empty. Um, if we go to this function right now, what I would suggest to you, I don't know if I mentioned this previously, but I have plugged in the default route over here as well. So that means that it really doesn't matter what kind of source you're using. It's still going to add the items. So make sure maybe to connect both of these uh, to the, this is valid check. I'm using this source because, well, I did this in the one of the first videos. I believe in the first video where we created this function, but later on I want to create like an actual shop where you walk in like you would in the real life. You pick the products from the shelf and you go to the counter and then you pay for those goods. So that's going to be the reason why I have this node actually here. If you are not going to use that, if you, if you don't plan on creating an actual shop, you can actually simply delete this whole node, run it directly like so and remove this source input. But well, later in the future, I do plan on adding that. So that's why I actually have this node. Otherwise, it's it's pretty much useless. So make sure you connect the default route as well, because otherwise, if you're going to leave this empty and the default pin is empty, it's not used, then that means your your items are not going to be added to your system. So let's let's give this a try. So let me pick up a backpack first. I need I need four of these axes. I need a couple of logs. So let's press I. So I have a couple of axes. So just to make this a little bit more complex, let's add let's add let's leave two of the axes in the player slots and a few over here. So now let's go to the crafting. Let's craft some planks. So you can see I removed one log and I have four planks. Let's do this once more. There we go. Two logs, eight planks. Now let's try to craft the vest. We need two logs, four planks and four axes. So I have two, eight and five. So if we craft the vest, as you can see, we removed the necessary logs. We removed the necessary axes and we are left with only four planks. And now we have a vest. And like I mentioned previously, I'm uh, prioritizing my backpack to be the first place where the items would get removed. So that's why the system removed three battle axes from the inventory first, and then it only selected one from the player slots. So that's going to be it for today's video. Our crafting system is now optimized as well. Uh, like always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to 
to my channel. We are closing in on 5,000 subscribers. Join my Discord where you can ask for help. I try to help as uh, I basically help everybody there. I'm trying to do my best to help with uh, with these systems and of course with many others that you might create in your uh, outside of this these series. So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.